Hello and welcome to the latest Signal broadcast. I'm Emma and I'm Lou and we're here to talk to inspiring business owners about their successes and their failures. The biggest barrier that um, Emma and I have found over recent years of interviewing lots of small business owners is that they feel isolated and especially isolated with their challenges. And this broadcast is where we want to um, help people feel less alone in their business. I think we just think it's really helpful to know that all of those business owners that you look at around you that are just looking like they're having the best time, they're doing really, really well, they're really successful. It didn't happen overnight. They've had the same challenges. They've also felt the overwhelm. They've also struggled. And that is what we're trying to highlight through this series. And um, people that know us at Signal know that we have a really great slogan and it is nobody should build a business alone. And on that note, let's see who we're talking to today, Emma. Well, today we have a gentleman called Nigel Matthews. His company is Games Quest. It's a local gaming company, a board game company. And we last spoke to him at Signal in um, 2019, September 2019, so before the pandemic. And he just hit that magical mark of a million pound turnover. So I think you and I are both really excited to find out yeah. what has been happening to Games Quest since September 2019. So we've invited him in. So Nigel, please come and talk to us. Come on in. Ta -da! Ta -da! As if by magic, oh, there you are. Magic. <laughs> I, am, I, am, I know my way around online meetings, damn you. How are you well both? Done. Yeah, very really well. good. <laughs> very well. How are you? I am fantastic. Thank you very much. Yep, yep, yep. Business is good. So on the up. So uh, can't complain. Survived the pandemic. We're all good. It's okay. it's so lovely to see you. And as you we too. said, we, we spit, saw you three years ago now. I believe that those right. three years have gone. I hope we haven't aged too much, Nigel. <laughs> well, the Zoom yeah, lights help with that anyway. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're both as lovely as ever, ladies. Yeah, you're you say all ever. the you say all the right things. <laughs> I know. And I mean them. That's yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So I think what we want to kick off with is uh, just tell us a little bit about what happened to you since we last heard you talk in September 2019. Just maybe a whistle stop tour through the last three years. Well, yeah, months. well, I think uh, a lesson here is um, to take um, take some hard decisions and take opportunities when they present them. If it feels right, then you kind of do it. We um, we found ourselves with uh, diverging business sectors with retail and fulfillment. Um, because we we moved into a into a more of a three PL model as a very specialist company within our marketplace, and that was growing exponentially. And what the what the pandemic really kind of highlighted to us was is that you know selling online, in particular Amazon and uh, third party selling, because we were Amazon you know for the word amazon bitches really um because we were selling all over the world and no that's the wrong word amazon slaves um we were a slave to amazon and ebay and etc and very much um we took a decision and it was a hard decision because we done you know this is how i, I you know run our business was was to be an online retailer um and that's how we build our business but we took a major decision to actually focus um on our what was that become our core business, which was uh, which is a project management uh, fulfillment um, 3PL business in a, in a nutshell. So we term ourselves now as a crowdfunding logistics partner. Yeah, just just focusing on as a family business for people that, that don't know you or didn't come to our previous talk. Can we just re rewind just a little bit just to give people an idea of where your business started and where it got to, like when we're talking about 2019, oh. just so that they can have some sort of idea idea of how long you've been in this business well we're, i started 25 years ago buying and selling secondhand board games from car boot sales and the books and then role-playing games and selling them on ebay that's how I, that's how we started and uh, we used to do that as a part-time business work in our garage and then and then we became an online retailer um selling on ebay amazon and we became an e-commerce e guru and literally at one point i was on every single amazon site in the world so yeah so then we we then ended up doing um, we were asked to help out a, a publisher in America to do his project, and we said yes. And that was seven years ago. And then we've gone from a £1.5 million retail company to a five um, projected £6 million um, um, a 3PL company, but very specialist in 3PL. Fantastic. Yes. So um, it sounds like you probably personally do much less selling now than perhaps you did at the beginning of your business journey. But um, we're here to talk about selling because it's no, that's not, not true. No, no not, not the all. case. Not OK, but let's so let's ask the question. 
Um, why is it, do you think, that most business owners find this whole business of selling their own products so difficult? Sure. Um, first of all, well, why is it difficult? Um, the question to that difficulty is because what is selling? What, what is you know, when you ask that question? What 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 is what 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 am I doing? What 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 uh, what is sales? Sales is an art. It's the art of communication of what you do to prospective people. Okay, to so whether that's a prospective buyer or partner who wants to buy your services. So it's an art of communication, um, and it's that's all it is. Now. The problem when you speak to most business owners is that what they don't like is that they don't like having to cold call people. They don't like having to reach out and knock on people's doors because it's uncomfortable. And as with anything, um, it's a form of rejection, you know, um, and that's it's not nice. You have to be you have to be. Um, uh, uh, quite hardened to that and accept the fact you're going to get you're going to get more no's and you're going to get yeses um but um once you realize that you ask yourself you, you ask yourself a question what is selling okay well, it's an art of communication of what i do in effect that's what you're doing um and and and, and there's all forms of selling that people would scare you with um there's um, there's um, persuasion selling there's um influence selling there's all sorts of selling that you have to do that but the most important thing is before you kind of go to that is well if you had to if you had to plan a project or anything there has to be a plan to that selling and and the fact of the matter is is what um what i find and and i do more selling as a ceo of an organization than any other person in this company or anybody else okay why is that well the art of selling or part of the art of selling is knowledge and knowledge is critical because if you have the knowledge okay and you know what you're talking about then people buy into that and the first thing that you people realize they've got to to sell is when i when i had my first ever interview and i remember it very very well um it was working it, i went for a job selling electrical equipment in curries in farnham it's when i first moved up in the valleys i didn't have a clue you know i done a business course when, and i sat there and the guy said to me like you haven't got the job um well he didn't say that first of all he said uh, he asked me the question he said when you're selling he said what's the first thing you should sell and I'm going like, and I'm trying to look around, look around the warehouse, going um, an iron, an iron, and knowledge, <laughs> a and printer, I'm, anything. I'm, and I think my answer was, well, knowledge about how a fridge works. I think, uh, right? <laughs> and, uh, and he said, no. He said, look, let me give you some advice. He said, I'm not going to take you on because you're a bit green behind the ears. And he said, the first thing you should sell is yourself. The first, very first thing that you should sell is you. Because people and, and and listen, I've been now in selling for over forty years. Okay, um, and there's never a truer word of selling. Um, it's you you sell yourself. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody will love you, um, but if you sell yourself, um, then that's the most important thing that you that you need to do. Now, once you have that mindset in, it's like you don't necessarily need to be the one that kicks the doors in okay um but whatever you do as a business owner you should always be prepared to be part of that sales process no matter what it is now it could be that um because ultimately you you will be you you will have so much more information at your fingertips than anybody else in your business and translating and communicating that um, puts people at ease. So we, we kind of sell. I'm, I'm in a very good position that my reputation is fantastic. Mm -hmm. My reputation is really good and we're quite unique in what we do that. And our reach out program is one that we um, we developed a, uh, a, a, a pre-consultative sell. So when we we say to people and a lot of new time people, you know, are launching it onto Kickstarter for the first time, we're not just going to go, well, here's my logistics prices, off you go. No, we don't do that. We We know what it is that they need to do to succeed. We know that they need to do certain things in order to succeed. And the more that they succeed, the more passes that we're going to ship. So we've developed our sales strategy not to go, oh yeah, listen, I, I can sell, I can, you can buy some shipping from me in the UK for eight pounds and we'll do all of this. No, 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 no. We approach it to say, 
what can we help you to do to succeed? And here's the things that we can do. And we have a strategy. It's called our five phase strategy from you need your logistics strategy. You need a marketing strategy. Go and talk to people that can help you with marketing. Go and talk to this. Um, we now even have our own little bit of marketing offering to, well, listen, you don't need to um, waste your time organizing freight. We can do all of that for you. And then so we get can... down to it, make our money. So you need that strategy in place. Can I just, sorry, just go back to something else that you said about knowledge. So yeah. having the knowledge gives you a level of confidence, doesn't it? Oh, if you know what you're talking about. And that sort of comes across when you're trying to sell. So it's really important that you have a good knowledge of what you're trying to sell. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and and I would encourage people to, um, if, you, if you're not comfortable with door knocking or, or looking out there, there's, there's ways and means. Marketing is one to bring leads in, you know, and you can get people to have an initial pre-qualification. But yeah, you, you yourself selling your services and the knowledge that you, you bring to that, because people typically, it, it all depends on what you're selling, by the way. Obviously, yeah. if, you're, if you're selling some bolts and widgets, then they should know, but not everybody does. Um, but if you're selling a service, then, you know, people, if they're buying into a service in particular, they, what do they want? Well, they want knowledge and expertise. It's not always about price, you know? Um, so knowledge and expertise and the ability to communicate and make them feel that they're in a safe pair of hands, absolutely gold. That's gold. You will have people, if you can do that, you will have people eating out of your hands ask so how would you um advise somebody if somebody came to you and said well that's all very well Nigel but I am really terrible at selling myself I'm a little bit shy I get, I get awkward I get tongue-tied you know I, 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 I'm just not very good at selling the sizzle but I have all the knowledge what would you say to them because that's we see that quite a lot yeah no absolutely um there are two ways i went to um i was part of toastmasters um for uh, for some time and it was really interesting to see the diversity of people that were coming to toastmasters um and toastmasters um was able to from all walks of life from people who were exactly as you described to people who had been working for you know i remember a project manager he was been in the same company for 30 years and now he was getting made redundant and then he was going to have to get himself out there so he needed to learn the art of, of communication so so the, there's two ways really. either you got to do it yourself you either got to teach yourself and you've got to get yourself out of that comfort zone so go into somewhere it doesn't have to be there's other people it doesn't have to be toastmasters but get, get, putting yourself in an environment where you can learn the skill of communication you can learn the skill of, of talking etc etc however I have uh, um, my colleague, Paul, um, who happens also to be my brother. He, um, he's very good. I've been teaching him for the last year about how to do, how to do selling. Um, and, you know, uh, I sometimes will just be in the background. OK, and he's the one that will do the communication, et cetera, et cetera. And then I come in when the expertise and the knowledge is required. So as I said to you right at the beginning, you don't necessarily need to be part of the whole process, but you need to be part of some of the process. And, it, and I would encourage it to be part of that crucial bit of that process there that the person who has like uh, you, uh, that you've employed to look at the getting the leads or getting that initial done has done the base work but now in the next in the next level so you don't necessarily need to do all the communication you need to be there to support that process and to come in with your expertise and knowledge um and to 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 caveat that so it could be that you work solo and get out there or you work with somebody else and the two of you in combination are a perfect fit in order yeah. to get that art over. So don't be, don't, I mean, one of the things I learned in terms of early door selling, I remember doing a course, if I don't bore you too quickly, but we, we were split into three teams and you had to trade or, um, or go to war. OK, there was there was two options that you could do. There's a team of three. Right. And I'm I used to be a risk player. And I go, I know we can backstab these people. And, and if you went to war, if somebody if two people went to trade, OK, and you went to war, you take all the money. And if you went all trading, you would double your money. Right. And it was an interesting dilemma because do you trust people? And we all went into our little corners and then we came back and some people go to war. And then we had three rounds of this and we tallied up how much money. And at the end of that, that, that training session, the guy said to us, OK, so what do you think you could have done differently? And we said, well, you know, um, I don't know, really. What? And we said, well, he said, did I tell anybody that you couldn't sit around the table and openly discuss what you were going to do? And we were going, <laughs> no. Did I tell you that you couldn't go to the bank and borrow more money? And we went, 
no. <laughs> and we go like, <laughs> no, you didn't. So the point is, is the, the lesson of that sales course was don't be bound in by artificial parameters. OK, don't be bound in to what you think ought to be done in a process, because each business will be different. Each, yeah. each way of engaging will be different from selling widgets to selling a service. Um, everything will be different and, and, and look at the resources you have. And if you need that resource and, and, and you, what you've got to remember is that sales, whether it's generating leads through your marketing or outreach program, call it your outreach program, is the lifeblood you have. And you'll get to a point where reputation then just lets that heart beat, 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 beat. And your, yeah. reputation, your reputation precedes itself and selling becomes a lot kind of easier. Um, so yeah, so don't be bound in by, well, traditional sellers, I've, I've got to get on the phone and do it myself, and I've got to ring. No, not yeah. necessarily. You don't necessarily do that. So, um, but yeah. Can we talk a little bit about um, establishing credibility? Um, is, that, that, is that a key point, would you say, to us to, in the first initial conversations, to establish that credibility before you go in for a sale? Um, th that's all about marketing and having, a, again, a, a, and it doesn't have to be a massive uh, marketing strategy and spending millions of pounds on marketing. I, I say to my people before, you know, when they do marketing, um, you know, obviously they need to have a logistics strategy in place because, you know, if they, if they start advertising logistics at five times what it's going to really cost them, they're not going to get any conversions. And it's the same with marketing and the same with with doing stuff is what helps aid conversion content and credibility content and credibility and there are ways of doing that so having lots of content about what you can what you do and how you do things and case studies um because what people will do is well if they look if everybody will look on the website everybody will look on your social media and they'll see how active you are my wife does it if she wants to if she wants to employ a gardener she stalks them I mean, in a nice way, she just talks to <laughs> on social media. She she goes on finds on social media and she sees what people are, are actually saying about these people. Um, so, so content and credibility is, is important um, because it aids conversion. People will go, eh, is what you're saying to me rubbish? Let me go and have a look at what people are saying, you know, particularly yeah. in this in this world with social media, et cetera, as well. Yeah. Um, it's having it's having that credibility factor um, that 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 are people are using you um, but equally there's other ways of getting that credibility by having you know people reviewing your product people reviewing your service as well as existing customer bases that you that you have to do that but yeah you might have to order listen i, I know you're my first customer i'll do you a deal i'll, I'll do it a 50 yeah. discount to prove myself so there's ways of kind of getting around that as well Okay, really, really excellent advice. I find myself literally taking notes um, myself. <laughs> so it's, every day is a school day. I know, so, right? Never yeah. stop learning. Never, yeah, never stop, stop learning. learning. Never stop no. learning. Nice. I think I think people do view it sometimes selling though you've either got the gift of the gab or you haven't I mean there's always that sort of people say oh I can't sell because I haven't got the I can't wing it I can't you know talk I can't but I just think everybody should focus on what they are good at and build maybe a team around them to help them sort of get them through and together they get through it so I think that is really key um yeah absolutely so um, um the thing is as well is is that I've got both, right? I've got knowledge and I've got the gift of the gap. I freely admit that, uh, that you know. They, they Nothing wrong with that, me. Nigel. I know, right? <laughs> um, but they call me Mr. Smooth, you know, because I can smooth uh, anybody. <laughs> Love it. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that if you put me against somebody who is a bit more like laid back and a bit more reserved, but has more knowledge than I have, when it gets to that final decision making process, I guarantee right i guarantee that they will buy from the person who has the most knowledge that makes them feel safe because i will only be able to take it so far uh, but i'm oh, like right, that guy really knows what he's talking about nigel's just full of hot air and i kind of half believe him but actually so supporting that person that has that gift of the gab and to come yeah. in at certain critical points in that sales process depending on the size of the customer you know i've just left um i've just informed my um my brother that he's now going to be looking after sales entirely but I'll, I'll help him with big meetings he doesn't need me anymore you know so um there comes a time where you can kind of pass over but don't don't begrudge um or or underestimate your power of um 
Let me, uh, can I share another little story for you? So yes. It's a wonderful story. Yes. Um, when I was a Toastmaster, one of the guys who was presenting did a wonderful presentation about how, it's a true story about how he, uh, he used to work for Cisco and they had this massive presentation, massive presentation to give Cisco and they were up, um, and they, they were up against, uh, it's the Deutsche Bank, sorry, they were Cisco, they did a massive, they had, they had all these German high, high brow kind of uh, Deutsche Bank people coming in and they were trying to sell this yes, multi, multi, massive, massive deal um, to do that as well. And he was really nervous and, and Cisco said, we're sending over our boy. We're sending over our man from America, right? And they were going like, he would do the presentation. We sent our technical guy over. And anyway, and, he, and the way he told the story is amazing. This guy showed up, right, with, um, with greasy hair, thinning greasy hair, tie back in a ponytail, um, his belly over flabbing his button of his belt, right, with a belt kind of loose, right? You know, sweating like, like nobody's business when he kind of upstage and was going like, you right, Kia? You ready? And the guy goes, oh, my God, this is going to be a bloody nightmare. We've, we've lost this. We've lo And the Germans were looking at this guy when he came on stage and did this presentation, right? They were going, oh, my God, this is going to be a disaster, an absolute disaster, right? The first slide he puts up was a site, a porn site. Right, this big is a porn site, right? And the guys and everybody's like going like, and, my, and he says, I, I'm, I just put my hands on my head. I said, oh my God, I, I will never work in this industry again. And the guy said, your business is worth, you know, um, 450 million. It was worth more than that, billions of pounds. So, let's, so your Deutsche Bank business is worth 40 billion pounds. The porn industry is 10 times that amount. 10 times that amount our technology okay and then he blurches into he didn't do any more slides he didn't do another slide he just kept that image up of this porn site right i mean it wasn't graphic but it was a porn site and then he explained about how cisco protects a business okay that is 10 times bigger than deutsche bank right this industry relies on cisco technology to have 24-hour uploads etc cetera, etc cetera. he blew them away they signed the next day, wow. right? They signed the next day. So this guy, this guy was not a slick gift of the gab um, uh, salesman. He was a person with an extreme amount of knowledge and expertise. And he tapped into what that customer needed and blew them away, Amazing. blew them away. So, so the point is, okay, is don't get hung up you, you do need a, a gift of the gab in order to open up, yeah. you know, open up doors, etc. But don't undervalue the power of your your, your knowledge and your expertise because that's ultimately what people want to buy, particularly in the service industry. I think that story is a really good example of the presumably the next most important thing about selling after selling yourself, which is understanding what is going to surprise and amaze and excite your audience and your customer and what they need so a really thorough understanding of them yeah and great story. also another moral of the story don't judge a book by its cover yeah that too, oh, that too. no never yeah. I, I did a pitch yesterday and at the close i went can i just say something to this guy he went yes yeah. do you know take that and he went yeah i said god you're a spitting image of gary barlow spitting <laughs> image of him right and the guy just fell about him and his wife just fell about they signed the next, they signed the next day you know as i say people buy from people you know, don't yeah. be frightened to have that um you know make them feel that they're they're, they're buying that you're, you're you're more than just somebody they're buying you want to be their friend you want to yeah. support them that um you know we emphasize that crucial to us and it's a seller is that we rely on pre business so we're going to treat you like a partner you know so uh, yeah Gosh, Nigel, we literally could talk yeah. to you all day long, but we're going to do some quick fire questions now, just to like dig deep a bit to find oh. out who you are. Oh. Be, be afraid. Be very I'm afraid. Tired. It's I'm so joking. scary, but they absolutely go. You <laughs> back on. Yeah. Are you an early bird or a night owl? Night owl. Oh. Don't function in the mornings. Roughly. Don't. <laughs> Cat or dog, Nigel? Cat oh, or dog. 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 Dog, dog all the dog. way. Dog. Two whippets. Love my whippets. Love my oh. yeah. <laughs> and what's your favourite business app? 
Um, that's a that's a really a tricky one because I'm a gamer, so I kind of go in different. We developed our own app really um, for our own 3PL software, so I kind of kind of say that. But I think um, I, I think probably um, uh, there's a couple that we use which are really good, which is Zero, which is the accounts app, which we obviously yeah. really like. Um, but the other one is LastPass. Oh, we've just had that installed, haven't we? Oh, we've just oh, done fans. that. It's incredible, isn't it? Just like, oh my god, don't worry about having to save another another email. What's that? You know, absolutely last pass. Uh, we're right behind that one. Um, I've got a quick question so off script. What's your favorite board game? Oh um, well, I love all sorts of board games because we actually own up our second board game cafe now in Worthing. But uh, oh. my all-time favorite game is a game called Quartermaster General. Um, it's a six-player um, World War Two game that's card-driven, and it's it's brilliant. I've played it about two hundred times. Um, however, other than that, um, I, I'm a sucker for things like Ticket to Ride and Catan. So um, I, I kind of equally love those. I don't know either with. of those. We're going to no, have to right. do some research. Yeah. Yeah, so if you want a family entry game, then things like Ticket to Ride and Catan uh, are always my stable kind of go-to kind of games when I'm introducing people. Uh, but Word Associate game is a game called Just One, which is just fantastic. But, um, yeah. Wow. Gosh, Emma and I, we played... Sorry, Lou, go on. I was going to say, Emma and I recently played a board game together and it was a geography one, wasn't it? What was yeah. it called? Where in the world are you? It's called... <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's quite fun. You get a blank well, map of the world and you have to guess where it. things happen. I know yeah. it. I know it. It's... Yeah, you don't, you're not rating it, are you? You're not rating no. it. We're not playing that round, Nigel, so I can tell you that much. <laughs> no, 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 no. My Come... children don't like it either. But I, no. you know, I like it. <laughs> All right. Thank I, you, I, Nigel. I, I could teach, teach you and your kids so many more great games that you will just get addicted to. So, uh, okay. which is so well, that sounds like a promise I'm going to hold you to. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Yeah. How old you kids? <laughs> well, they're a bit old now. We could have done this ten years ago. They're twenty-four, twenty, and twelve. Ah, oh, perfect age. We can yeah. some family games. We can definitely show you for hundred percent. Yeah. One of my my oldest is a professional poker player, so he doesn't play much else other than poker these uh, days. I do a bit of online poker in, so uh, yeah, but not much. But yes, just like to be with my mates. Love it. It's good. Right. We could, as I say, talk all day. Nigel, I really, really appreciate your time today. Okay. We both do. Um, it's okay. been so great listening to your stories and listening to your success and how you've pivoted and changed and the insights that you've brought um, is incredible. And I'm sure everybody that is watching this will be saying, actually, do you know what? I can, I can do this. And I think the key thing is knowledge brings you confidence and a, a small business owners owning their own business have all the knowledge in the world. So it's that that they just need to push forward. Be bold, yeah. people. Be bold. If you see an opportunity you know to put your foot in the water see where it goes yeah see, see you never know where it leads you i just helped a, ah. i helped the publisher out um one day and for 80 orders and seven years later i've got a, a large 3pl company i never even thought about 3pl so um you know don't don't be frightened i got the philosophy is that never say no until you can't say can't yes. say yes i'm just going to love say it. that because i remember that i actually rewatched your last talk from september 2019 oh, and it was go. called yeah. never say no until never say no until you absolutely can't say right no. you never know yeah. you never know um where what what direction that you are but um yeah just um, just go for it and see what happens thank you so much and unfortunately Pleasure, guys is all we've got time for today but for everybody who's watching this playback uh just want to let you know we're going to also post Nigel's talk from uh September 2019 so you can have a listen to what was going on three years ago when we did this um but we really hope you got some good takeaways about selling some really good inspiration and some insight on the subject of selling today and remember if you're watching this we think you're amazing that's all from us and we'll see you next time at the next Signal broadcast. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 -bye.